everyone. Um, Hello. Let's call this meeting to order. And haven't met our newest member. Um, she's in the upper right hand. Pam Belford. Um, we are fortunate to have her experience with us. And she is taking as much time as she needs to get up to speed since we took years. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just checking the uh, the boxes of who's here. And um, yeah, let's get started. So um, agenda review uh, for a change. I have nothing to add. Anybody have anything to add or shuffle around? Um, I may do some shuffling down when we get into item four in terms of just order. Um, and just to let folks know, um, as we start the administrative items, um, I've let a couple of people here know we have another committee coming in at six o'clock. So we will end no later than 550. Um, and possibly before that, you never know. <laughs> So, but no later than 5.50, so they can get in here and get set up. It's the Community Center Committee. Um, okay. And I don't think we have any members of the public with us today. No? Okay. Um, Julie, you'll let me know if anybody joins along the way. So our first item is uh, the minutes of our last monthly meeting, December 11th, 2023. Uh, a link was sent out. I actually didn't look to see if anybody had gotten in there to make any edits. <laughs> Are they, um, how do folks feel about approving them as submitted? All in favor? So moved. So moved. Cool, thank you. We're good. Um, now, just a couple of calendar items. One, I think everybody has on their calendar um, the January 16th um, workshop, which we are using that time slot, which is on all our, our calendars to have uh, office hours three. And Julie has let people know about that opportunity. And I think we have several people signed up that take us into um normally we have an hour so but it, it's taken us into 520 at this point is that right correct right. yeah we have enough people signed up that we have um that we will end at 520 so for all who can join um andy uh julie can you share with us who signed up i know jim has but who else has signed up Jim and Kurt, and, and then um, Dave Holman, who has that proposed project yep. over on Union Hall. And then I asked Brian Banton if he wanted to participate. He has uh, property in the lower village. It, nothing from Adam Lee, though. We haven't heard from him. No, he's not. Okay, thank you. And there's still time, so we might have, you know, another person signing up and we can let the people determine who have claimed their time slots if they want others to be able to sit in with them or not in the past they have. I think it's a it's a useful sort of learning process to listen to the discussion. And of course, Leslie Oberholtz, who will be with us. Okay, moving on to that next bullet. Um, at the select board update, the select board immediately asked when we would like, because we, we made the suggestion in our update that we, that the select board have a workshop and use the opportunity because there are two brand new members of the select board and we have a member of CPIC, although that was wasn't part of the plan at the time in terms of doing the um, the workshop to focus the workshop on the 2019 plan, the whole thing with, of course, greater emphasis on recode and how recode comes out of that. 
And immediately after I had finished giving the update, um, there were actually no questions other than when would you like the workshop? And um, it was determined, uh, um, Derek suggested that we do it in the first couple of weeks of February in order to let the budget process sort of run its course, that that would be a good time in terms of staff and um, and you know, Derek is not back yet. He's away at the moment. He'll be back tomorrow. So I was hoping that we might have a suggested date on the calendar, um, but we won't until a day or two or three from now. Um, and what I wanted to do was kind of see with folks here, um, we don't have to have this discussion right now. It's just a matter of when this is gonna fall on the calendar. But you know, later on in our agenda, I'd like to just have a little discussion on how we prepare for that. Okay, moving on to item four, the recode update. Um, why don't we start, if it's okay, with the code cleanup? Okay. Is that all right? Sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> update on that. Um, planning board met on the 14th of December to review revisions to the subdivision ordinance. And then they had another workshop on the 28th of December to review articles 12 through 15 of the zoning ordinance. And we captured all of those changes, and I forwarded them to Kirk, and he's already... Um, made those changes in the Google Doc that we have. So um, I'll be reviewing those and um, hoping that we will be able to hold another workshop at the end of this month on the 25th to review conditional use. But I have a bunch of work to do to prepare for that. So um, nothing is set in stone at this point, but, but that's my goal. And then following that conditional use workshop, I think it's just going to be one more workshop, really, to go through all the changes, um, all the sections that we've looked at, and make sure everything's been captured. It's Great. Um, so Kirk is actually making changes as they're recommended, and 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 so we kind of, in a sense, we have a red line document. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> um, um, the first um, the um, speak up just for the yeah, yeah. The first provision was for subdivision ordinance. And what were the other changes that I just want to get in our minutes? We reviewed the subdivision ordinance on the 14th, yeah. and then on the 28th, we reviewed articles 12 through 15 from the zoning ordinance. <laughs> Great, thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Um so that seems to be moving along well. Mm -hmm. Um it sounds like by the end of February, we'll be ready to wrap things up. Um, okay, so I'd like to deal with the milestones and time frame at the end of this little section. So moving on to the um, a little update for those who were not able to attend, as well as those of us who were there on the workshop on January 2nd. We went into that workshop with two agenda items and we actually kind of had conversation around, from my notes, four items. Um, one of them was to look at, um, you know, Dave Holman has submitted a project or at least an idea. Um, I don't know if it's a site plan or somewhere between a sketch and a site plan. Um, for a project on Union Park Road. And it brought up some ideas um, that, you know, were brought up to the group and uh, about whether or not, you know, the zoning boundaries, where, whether it makes sense to shift the zoning boundaries. And we came to no conclusions on that. Um, we tossed it around, looked at it from a couple of different angles and um, 
I think it's probably something that as we go into wrapping things up, that will be discussed at just in terms of, you know, the, the ideas for the zoning boundaries came from, you know, came from some clarity. And the only change we've made so far is to draw in some of the boundaries and to um, divide Topsom Fair Mall into two zones, a smaller and a larger zone. So this at least is an idea that can be when we end up having a conversation with the consultant, we can at least raise that question. Um, part of it is for us to be very clear in, in answering questions. I mean, the, the possibilities come up along the way and whether it's a change that we think is a good change or not a good change, at least it brings an opportunity for clarity and learning for me. So um, yeah. Um, is it possible to get a preliminary reading uh, from Leslie before the, uh, the third office hours? I think oh. we should, honestly, good. because Dave Rodling will be yes. attending the office yeah. hours. So I think we need to give her a, a heads up on that. Right. And there was one other thing that we wanted to, we, I think she should have the heads up in terms of Brian Banton's mm -hmm. interest as well. So at least that one is completely spelled out in an email. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, both of those things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so we looked at, at Dave Holman's project. It's a, it's, is it 132? units of housing, is that? He was proposing at least 179. 179, oh my goodness. Yeah, okay. So, and these are one and two bedroom units with a few studio apartments. Mm -hmm. And right now um, that's not allowed. The density is not allowed in the zone. Um, so, We'll see what happens there. I'd, I'd rather not say anything further at this point, um, but that's something that we looked at. Um, the other main thing that we went into that meeting to talk about was um, the timeline and milestones between now and kind of bringing recode to the voters. Um, so we, we did sort of spell some of that out and I'll get to that. Um, in a second and probably rely on others to fill in some of that picture. Um, have I said enough so far about the, the, the one? Go ahead, Andy. Uh, one of the other things I don't want to forget about is the fact that I have a lot of people, including people from TDI that are asking, when are they going to see that first red line? And, right. and I, I don't want to forget that because I was called today on that again, too. Just I hear looking you. for a timeline. Right. And the thing, um, the thing, you know, there were, so we went into that workshop with two agenda items, but two were added along the way. And one of them was, you know, what you've been hearing from people in terms of wanting to see a red line on the draft to see what changes um, have been made. Of course, no changes have been made yet, but at a certain point, which, you know, just to let the cat out of the bag, we're talking about the end of February. We are looking at the end of February being the sort of the end of this input process so that the month of March will be a time during which a red line can be produced for review by the committee, by staff, by folks who have participated in it. One thing, like, um, I know the two people that are attending the workshop are going to say on the 16th, we had some in-depth discussion and some changes were going to be addressed um, by our consultant. Have those changes been addressed yet? And if so, how have they? I know that, so be prepared for those questions in the workshop on the 16th, because... Okay. I mean, I think it's it's fair to ask, but we're you know it's not this is not a process where every substantive bit of feedback 
is addressed in real time and we move forward. There, you know, there's going to be a process of all the feedback coming in, the revisions being done, and then moving forward with the next draft. So whether they're, they're not having... they're not expecting they're not expecting things to happen instantly, but they're they're talking this was four or five months ago that they had their first meeting with with our consultant and our first workshop and and you know, there were a lot of issues that were promised that in those meetings about, yeah, I'll make some changes or I'll address this or this needs to be this needs to be addressed. So they're just saying, has have those things been addressed and what do they look like? I think it's fair to say they will be addressed. And what we need to do in this office hours, and I think all the people who have, are participating know this, that we need to cover new ground. There's no point covering ground we've already covered. Um, in the, the, the areas that have been discussed and will be re revised, that they can review that again. But this particular session, we need to, you know, there's a lot of material in the code, in the draft, that hasn't been touched yet. And that's I'm not arguing with you. I'm just telling you what they're going to say. So I'm just saying be you. prepared for the... For the... <laughs> okay. Anything further before I move on to so that we've talked about red line draft the other item is an item that um, Rick has raised and I think it's very wise and I'm not sure how to do it but is to to do to prepare an inventory of nonconformity in the in the Topsom Center zone um, subject to the form based code hybrid recode. Um, we did bring up the idea uh, that this might be a fascinating project for a Bowdoin intern. Um, I don't know if that's the right way to address it, but um, it's at least a thought and I'm sure that, um, you know, that will be something that will be discussed with the town manager over the next few weeks. I have a question about that. Sure. Um, so didn't Julie already put together something that was reviewing and how would, how is that different from what Rick suggested? What I had created was just looking at the uses and um, what are our legal uses or legally non-conforming uses, et cetera. But this would be address um, the dimensional standards more whether or not the lots meet the same meet the, the requirements i guess of the new right. code. okay that helps thanks yeah okay so did i miss anything from our workshop discussion we had really great participation there um okay so milestones and time frame um, the big suggestion that sort of, um, just to give people a little bit of background, um, Rick and I met with Julie to sort of map out a possible time frame, and that was shared with the town manager. The conclusion of that was the um to be on the warrant for the town meeting in november and it was suggested firmly by the town manager um, that this particular election is a doozy there will be a lot of heightened emotion around it and we may want to stay away from this particular election. Um, others among us think that the next special town meeting in May is where we're going to end up. Um, just to be transparent, my hope is that that's not the case. The reason being, um, my hope is that we will wrap this up and be on a special 
town meeting warrant in January or February of 2025. So roughly a year from now, maybe 13 months. My thinking, and I'm delighted to hear from other committee members on this, my thinking is that the special town meeting warrant in May is usually a very full warrant. There's lots to discuss, including the budget, um, but there are usually a lot of other items. And I think it would be helpful to us to have people encouraged to come for this one item. Focused on this, this is a lot to focus on. Um, and I can just imagine that it will, I, it could work for the end of January or early February. I don't know, but I think we're talking about that time frame. Um, and we can plug in some things along the way in terms of the specific milestones, but does anybody want to chime in and just address those sort of general ideas? Not November. Susan hopes not May. Um, that we may, you know, aim for sort of a, a January, February 2025. Any thoughts about that? Sounds wise. <laughs> Anything? Yeah. yeah, good. My only, my only comment is, yeah, just we cross that bridge and we'll get there and reassess in September, October, see where we're at. Right. But really, it's looking at the funding for the consultant. Yes. 2025. That's right. Um, my only other little bit of question, and you know, we'll see where we're at at that point, but in January, February timeframe, if there's a number of residents that go south for the winter, they may not be captured in that process. Right. But you're not going to, no matter what time of year, there's going to be gonna some, miss some people. So that's right. That's not a big drive. Right. And their, their vote won't be captured, but their input can be captured well in advance. Um, so let's just go back. Um, so now, um, in a, a week or so, we're going to have office hours three, um, further revisions for the cleanup and update will be given to Kirk, who's preparing a red line revision of that part of the code. In February, we want to be doing our 2019 plan workshop for the select board looking at the end of February as a deadline for this round of input with Topsom Center recode. And having March be the time when a red line version of those revisions to, the, to this draft will be available for review before moving on to the next draft. What we talked about a little bit is, is that we're aiming for April 1 as a good deadline for the revised draft. At that point in April, we could schedule a planning board workshop and perhaps by the end of the month, a select board workshop or going into early May, a select board workshop on the revised Topsom Center recode. And then at the special town meeting in May, I don't know the date, I'm thinking it's the 22nd, but I looked on the website, couldn't find it on the calendar. It's usually a Wednesday, so I'm thinking it's the 22nd. Um, that that the May town meeting be used as a, a great opportunity for um, kicking off the public engagement phase of Recode, the whole thing. 
At that point, June is very often a good month to catch people before they're away for summer activities. Um, we had great participation. I think it was probably in the first half of June. I don't even remember, mid-June maybe at the library, we had a huge turnout on the um, comp plan update. So hopefully we can have a similar kind of event at the, in a, you know, it's good for, opportunity for families, be warm enough, kids can come. So but that would be June and then more um, sort of input and public engagement in the fall as it's deemed needed, you know, September, October, um, and then go into sort of the, the warrant schedule. Um, I don't quite know how, like if we were aiming for the end of January, we haven't calendared exactly when those deadlines are needed, but we're all of those future things will be adjusted as we go. Any thoughts in hearing all that? <laughs> it's, it, I don't feel like the end is in sight, but it's, you know, the end of the tunnel is starting to wink. I had a thought. Yeah. Or a question for Julie. The consultants, I, I don't have any idea. You know, their time frame, their, I mean, this all, this, this depends heavily on the consultants finishing, yeah. finishing the updates um, that were given them. Mm -hmm. And then back and forth discussions or back and forth corrections. Right. How do you see it from what's been happening with them? I was really impressed with how quickly Kirk turned around the last revisions that I sent him. I was not expecting it to happen that quickly. Oh, okay, that's encouraging. Um, so I imagine, um, I mean, if it continues like that, the, the code cleanup portion should be done fairly soon. Um, there were a few places where um, Leslie noted that Kirk's input is needed on the Topsom Center piece. Um, I'm just gonna assume that they've talked about that or they will talk about that at, with us or on, with each other at the point when they need to, you know, ahead of the deadline for then, revisions. Then the other major piece, of course, is the budget to pay the consultants. I know that the last time, I recall one of our last meetings you said you were you were preparing. Uh, mm -hmm. Eric has been out of the year. office. We were preparing a budget for the consultants work to be done for the 2024. Mm -hmm. We're looking at, you know, what what it's going to cost going forward um, to close out this project. So I I plan to meet with Eric hopefully tomorrow and go oh. back to the location. But this timeline that we've created certainly helps in that process. It feels reality based. Yeah. Then the, the other thing is to check it with the consultants. I'm I don't know, it's just a feeling, but I have the feeling that they will be very glad to work with us to get it done because they have, I'm sure, lots of other work to move on to. Um right. yeah. Okay. So that takes care of um, number four. Wow, we're moving fast here. <laughs> um, so we're on to liaison updates. Um, and I know we have one. We have, um, since we met, um, TDI has met and Andy has an update for us. Yes, I do. Um, and I called up our chair after you sent the reminder to me, Susan, just to, to make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, the survey that's done, we were struggling a little bit with the consultant just from a time standpoint of getting um, everything that we want on, on the set of plans. And we're, we're, keep in mind, Kurt and I are 
I'm a professional land surveyor, so I'm, I'm very picky as well as Kurt's a professional engineer. So when we got the initial set of plans, we had a lot of things we wanted to add that will enhance these plans. And one of them, for example, is to make sure that all the businesses are labeled on, because you've got in the plan, in this quarter survey, you've got the front face of every building along the road. And we just want to make sure we add little things like the names of businesses, for example, um, uh, the paint store, I can't remember the name of it now, um, it's on across from the, the Washville car wash and thing, just all those names. So when, sure, when, when, they, yeah. when a lay person looks at it, they can understand it a lot easier and see where they are along the, along the way. And, and there were things like Dan Catlin brought up uh, some questions. Um, he's not on the TDI board, but he's in line to be on the TDI board. So he attends our meetings and he had some questions about, will it show, the width of the right of way, so we'll know whether we can do a, another traffic circle at the intersection of Park and and um, Thompson Fair Mall Road. And I said, yeah, all those all those property rights and all those property lines and all the easements and the infrastructure, everything is going to be on these set of plans. Um, we do have another board meeting next Wednesday, a week from two days from now. Um, hopefully, we'll, as a board, look over those plans and, and, and deem that they are substantially finished so that we can share them with the public. But I can't guarantee that until I see the product a week from Wednesday. Uh, we're still going through a, a lot of issues with Derek and cleaning up some of our bylaws. We've done those. Um, we want to make sure that we've got a solid uh, process where if someone needs TDI's help from a development standpoint, whether it be advice or help with the planning staff or help monetarily or or whatever, that we've got our ducks in, in order in line so that we can give them um, consistent answers to everybody that might ask. Because we have had some asks from some developers, you know, <clears throat> can you give us $100,000 seed money to get this project going? And while, yeah, we do have 100000 but we're not going to throw it into... Um, something like that. It's just too, it's too broad a, a an option. I'm not saying that there wouldn't be a particular case, and I'll throw one out that might come down the pipe someday. Is can we um, extend the sewer and water to the west side of two ninety five and open up that part of Thompson for development, i.e. the southwest quadrant, which is a uh, hundred acres that's vacant? Would it be worthwhile for TDI to pitch some monies in to make sure that that was a, a, a solid feasibility study might be done before the town offers any assistance to a, a developer in the form of a TIF or something. A lot of little things like that that we're, we're looking at. We're focusing more on how can we help the community from an economic standpoint instead of just having a meeting and, and meeting our minimum criteria as a committee. We're trying to be more active and more pro pro economic economic development focused. So uh, uh, we did get a letter from Crooker Construction asking them if if um, TDI would help facilitate um, a meeting with the neighborhood that the Pajep Scott neighborhood is, has a an attorney that's representing them. And of course, Crooker has one representing them and, and things have been stalled for a while. We're trying to get through some communication issues that have all kind of been positive. You just haven't seen them in the general public nor in the in the in the town planning um, realm of, of ideas. But a lot of things are going on in the background. So um, TDI was asked if they might help facilitate something like that, and they're considering that. And, and I think uh, a letter is forthcoming from TDI to Crooker um, by next by a week from Wednesday. Um, I'm trying to think anything else. I can't think of anything, anything I might have mentioned that you guys have a question for me or. Does anybody have any questions for Andy before I spring my own? <laughs> um, what I'd like to do, and I am completely um, okay with either answer, Andy. I, I thought it might be an, a useful tool for our newest member. Um, and, you know, 
the process of learning is ongoing for all of us. It might be interesting to actually call up and share on the screen the strategy matrix and look at, because we've got the way that chart is sorted, it's an Excel spreadsheet. The way it's sorted is, you know, multiple ways, including by the entity that has the lead. So we could have a look at the various items that TDI has leadership on just to see, because I know, you know, the, the plan was done in 2019. And one of the things we've talked about with the committee members who are liaison to the various town departments, committees, commissions, is, you know, the, the, the matrix items, the strategy matrix, it's not set in stone. These are ideas. These are, you know, <clears throat> sort of ideas with some specific direction based on town resident input and desire at the time. Um, sometimes, you know, time shifts what we're doing. Um, and, but, you know, the thing is to that this is the list of things that we're asked to go over with the entity that we're a liaison with. So I, would you I mind? Would, I, no, no, I wouldn't mind, but I guess um, it would be fair to Pam and, yeah. and some of the other members to have a few minutes to digest that instead of throwing it out. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, I haven't looked at that for a long time. I would like to look okay. at that. Maybe I'm off offline on a few things that I haven't looked at. Because to be honest with you, I haven't looked at that matrix for a long, long time. Sure. And I don't sure. know how many members have. Yeah. Um, we can certainly go through that item by item right now, but I don't think that might not be the best use of our time tonight. But that's my well, opinion. Yep. And the only reason I actually suggested it is because we have uh, our meeting is going to end very early. That's not a bad thing. Ending early. <laughs> we have had some long meetings, my committee folks. Um, so ending early is not a problem. I hear you, Andy. We will have a chance to look at that. Often. Well, no, you guys no can go right ahead. I just, you know, it's been a long day in the sun here down in Florida, so it's kind of hard to... <laughs> yeah. And I don't mean to rub it in, but... You, you know that we have 12 inches of snow. Know, We're still I, moving I was told. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's skip that little idea. Um, is there anyone else who, um, I think last time we had an update on uh, the library from Robin, and we have a regular, um, and as needed, Pete updates us on the planning board, but there's nothing current right now. Um, I think this later this week, the planning board's gonna have a workshop um, on Dave Holman's project, which should be fascinating. Right. Julie pretty much covered yeah. I went to the December 28th meeting also. Yeah. And I was impressed with you know how how the how the planning board and Julie are plugging along. It's uh it's uh from my point of view, it's you know it's moving right along. Yeah. And there's been some heavy discussion about certain items. And of course, this focused on procedures, administration, enforcement by the code officer, uh, definitions and measurements, um, procedures for applications, and landowners wanting to make property changes. So they're trying to go streamline the processes. Yeah. Processes as uh, as we have discussed before. Right and right. uh, make sure that the applicants have enough time to with that process right and to and and time with the planning board time with the planning board staff um so these are these are things that don't get looked at very often this is mm -hmm. this is the time to do this yeah so i'm impressed with the the progress is slow but there's a lot of ground it's, to cover and it's steady and that's and the steady. point you know that yeah. that uh with the steady so, julie and the planning board are doing their job Cool. <laughs> Very I'd, cool. I'd like to jump onto that too and, and tell Julie I think you're doing a great job and the consistency yeah. the consistency helps a lot and, and yeah. I know you haven't been here a long long time but you're you're, you're making a lot of progress at a great pace and, and thank you thank you for what you're doing thank you 
We're hoping she will be here for a long, long time. <laughs> Thumbs up. Okay. Um, unless anybody has anything to say. I can't report on a meeting that is going to happen at six. So, oh, oh. Are, are you going to be part of that? I will be. Okay, uh, great. Not, not from here. But, right, yeah. right. So, next month we'll hear about that. Good. Uh, and well, I, or I call you nine or ten. <laughs> or well, in my understanding, because Mark, I think, updated us a month or so ago briefly, he talked about lots of things happening this month. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if it goes into next month in terms of. Um, what are those things called? Focus groups. Focus groups. Thank yeah. you. It's been a lot of energy and a lot of work. Right. Started. Yes. Okay. So we'll hear more about that next month. I just wanted to know that we do have an attendee too. But no raised hand or anything. So I don't. It, no. Is that Dan? Dan Flagg. Flagg. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Glad you're with us, Dan Flagg. Okay. Um, so let's adjourn. It is 5.11 for our minute taker. This is a record. One quick question, Susan. Okay, um, all right. The, the workshop next week, I know it's usually four to five, but we, do we anticipate it going to maybe six? Is that? I, I think at the moment we anticipate it going until 5.20. If okay. there's another person or pair um, who would like to participate will go until 540 um, and possibly okay. until six. I think um, Leslie is prepared to go until six. Previous office hours have been two hour processes. So um, in, in previous hours, office hours, there's been a number of times where Leslie said, well, geez, you know, be great. Kirk, is there any chance that Ms. Kirk in the uh, next office hours or not an option or... um, we can discuss it. I have a feeling that what Leslie is doing is she's making a record of a number of things mm -hmm. that Kirk needs to be involved in sorting out, um, and that that will be yeah that will be an efficient use of his time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Five twelve. We're done. <laughs> Thank Congress. you, everybody. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah.